by uh, methods and uh, the, the, our subtopic of interest today is aluminum. So uh, as I said, in our today's lesson, we are dealing with aluminum. I don't know whether you're able to see, let me just... Uh, uh, um, yeah, we can see what you're sharing, sir. You can see? Yes. 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 Ah, let's make this logo. There's some changes to logo. Now you're not seeing anything, eh? I want to... Say it now, Let me see, I'm just, there are some things that I'm doing so that it becomes more magnetic, it becomes more good. So it's not, okay. Now you are now able to see it still, eh? So that's okay. Ama Mwani Sai. We can see it, we can see it, sir. No, no. Okay, so good. If you're able to see it, well and good. The, if you're able to see whatever I'm, I'm sharing, it's okay. So that's that's very much important for you uh, to be able to understand. So the topic that we are dealing with there is uh, the aluminum. That's the topic of metro. Of course, the uh, welcome to our today's lesson. We are going to make it as interesting as possible. Uh, we are trying to break it down uh, so that we're able to understand. So let's look at now our main, uh, our main or possibly topics or rather the main tax that we are supposed to carry out today. And we need, we are going to look at the, the still the topic uh, is the topic of extraction of metals. Uh, we were looking at the extraction of aluminum now. So the metal that we're dealing with is the extraction of aluminum metal. And the tax number two, we are going to look at what is the, uh, how is aluminum metal extracted uh, through the through the electrolysis process, we are going to use the, to look at the uses of aluminium. We are also going to look at the environmental effect that is associated uh, with the extraction of aluminium. So welcome uh, as they try to break it down uh, and try to unmask and unpack all the possibilities in which uh, uh, this 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 particular metal uh, can be tested in normal examination set. So the objectives, the objectives is that by the end of the lesson, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to name the ores of aluminum. That is objective number one. And it's also the objective that is very much important when you're studying any particular metal that you should be able to name the at least two, not one, the ores, you should also be able to name the chief O. The other objective is that you should be able to describe uh, the, 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 the test for the presence of aluminum ions. That is also the first thing. If you go uh, uh, trying to extract a particular metal and you look at it and you look at now, uh, you want to extract a particular metal, the first step is to test the presence of the metal cation in that rock that you suspect it to contain to contain the aluminum or rather the particular metal. Objective number three, we are going to look at uh, to delve deep in the electrolytic extraction of aluminum using electrolysis. Then objective number four, we'll be able to, use the, to look at the use of aluminum and the environmental effects of extraction of, of aluminum. So welcome as we try to navigate, as we try to unpack uh, this particular uh, subtopic, uh, that is the extraction of metals. We are going to be able, I'm going to be, uh, to be as thorough as possible. I'm going to also be able to unpack it as much as possible so that now we are not going to leave any detail missing that. So uh, grab your pen, also take some screenshots because we may not be able to write everything but make sure that we are able at least now, after you take the screenshots, be able to write down those notes. So objective, they have already looked at the objectives in the extraction of aluminum. So the major ores of aluminum, 
Maybe let me see whether some people know. So what are the major oils of aluminum that you know? Somebody to attempt. Book right. Yeah. We have the box site. Box site. And what is the formula of the of the box site? So another another O of aluminium is what? Mika. Mika. Yes. So you can look at that. So the three major O's of aluminium we have the bauxite, and that is the chief O. This is the formula. This is not the formula of bauxite. It is important for you to understand that whatever we are having here is not really the formula of the bauxite. Whatever we are having here, this is the formula of the main component of the bauxite because the bauxite contains even other impurities uh, like the iron oxide, the, like the silica. But the main component of bauxite is the hydrated aluminum oxide. So this is the, the formula, the, the, a normal examiner will not tell you to write the, the, the formula of bauxite, but will be told to write the formula of the main component of that particular O. So the O is bauxite, which is aluminum oxide main component. Then it has other impurities like the iron two oxide, it also adds the silica and even arsenic oxide. So then we have the corodum. Corodum is still aluminum oxide, but in hydrous. This one does not have the what? This one does not have the, the water, like the, this one now. So it does, this one does not have the water. So that's the difference. Then we have the mica which is simply a double salt. Uh, potassium, aluminum, silicate. So it's a double salt, that's the maker. So those are the oils. At least make sure that you're able to name at least two main oils of aluminum. We can continue? Yes. Yes. OK. Yes. So, so now we uh, have to confirm. Yes. Let, 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 let me see whether you understood uh, when you are when you are being told aluminium and sodium. So how do you confirm the presence of an O in a rock? Assume you provided a rock. What's the first step that you need to do? Crush the rock. Yes, you crush the rock then. You crush it into a font folder. And the, the other one you do what? Excuse the me. next step, yeah. For this one is aluminium, so you can add a dilute acid. But to make your work easier, if the examiner has not provided you the acid to do, but the first thing to take the ion, you have to make the ion available in solution form. So what you're going to do is uh, you crush the O into a fine powder, add dilute nitric five acid, then you filter. You filter to remove undissolved impurities. Then to the filtrate, you divide it into three portions. The first portion, you had sodium and rugby. You're going to get a white precipitate, which is soluble in excess. When you get that kind of a scenario, it confirms presence of the cations, that is zinc, lead, and aluminum. To differentiate the three, to the second portion, you had aqueous ammonia. And here you get a wild precipitate insoluble in excess. At that point, you confirm is either aluminum or lead. Not you confirm. That now eliminates the zinc, which was good in the first portion. Now you'll remain with lead and aluminum. To differentiate lead or aluminum, you can add aqueous so potassium sulfate or sodium sulfate or sulfuric acid or sodium chloride. Formation of a if you get no white PPT, then it confirms aluminum. If it is a white PPT, you confirm that is lead. That is uh, a way of being able to uh, test the presence of aluminum. So let's see it. Statement number one. Statement number one. I've said you crush the O into a fine powder. Then you had dilute nitric five acid. 
then you filter. Those are marking points. You are dividing it to three portions. The first portion you had sodium hydroxide. You are, when you have sodium hydroxide, you get a white PPT insoluble in excess. Not so insoluble, but soluble in excess. That confirms presence of aluminium, lead, or zinc. Then to the second portion, you add aqueous ammonia. Here you get a white precipitate, which is insoluble in excess. Now at that point, you remain with lead or aluminium. You remain with lead or aluminium. Then to differentiate lead and aluminium, you add dilute ACL, dilute sulfuric six acid, sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, or any soluble chloride or soluble sulfate. But this, the, 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 here you need to invoke the knowledge acquired under qualitative analysis. And it is very important for you to be able to understand that. So, any question there? Is it clear? Yes. yes. So just a minute. Okay. Let me just repeat. After the this past statement, this one applies to all methods. Utan that on a crash, won't get the acid. It's not a much you are diluted five acid, but it's only that all nitrates are soluble. So it makes your work a little bit easier. It makes your work a little bit easier. It is very much important for you to be able uh, to understand. So it makes your work very easy. It makes your work very, very easy for you to be able to have a look at that. So in that kind of manner, whatever I'm saying, when you add when you add sodium hydroxide, when you add sodium hydroxide and you get a white PPT in soluble in excess. I want to look at this. Uh, maybe you could so I want to repeat, we are in the first thing. Eh? So we are this the starting point, confirming presence of the O. The first thing, the first thing after, after you crack, Hello. Munani Pata. I've lost yes. 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 Munani Pata? Yes. 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 Okay, so I repeat. Eh? I want to repeat for purposes of those people. Now, I'm going fast. Nasema, am I fast? Yes, Mutu Nasema. Yes, then I find somebody saying I'm going very fast. So it's good to say, Mwalimu, repeat. Can you harmoniously? Of course, I'm, uh, of course, uh, regurgitate water, or rather, regurgitate whatever you have said. It is, there's no problem with that. So I've said, after you crush the O, you normally add an acid. You add the acid to free the ions. You can only take the ions when they are in solution form. After you crush, and I want you to, add, to, 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 to write this one clearly. You divide the filtrate. You are filtering to remove any unreacted impurities that have not dissolved. Now from there, the first portion, you are adding sodium hydroxide. The expected observation there will be a white precipitate soluble in excess. After adding sodium hydroxide, you're supposed to get a white precipitate soluble in excess. When you get a white precipitate soluble in excess, that tells you there could be aluminum, lead, or zinc. So you have not yet confirmed, but you have now narrowed down 
the cation that could be present in this solution are three. So uh, aluminum, then lead. You add to the second portion aqueous ammonia. The expected observation there will be a white precipitate, which is a white precipitate, which is insoluble in excess. Now you eliminate zinc because zinc will form a white PPT soluble in excess ammonia. So now you remain with lead or aluminum. After you remain with lead or aluminum, now you invoke the concept of solubility of salt, whereby you add a soluble sulfate or a soluble chloride. Here you can use dilute HCl, sodium sulfate, sulfuric acid, or dilute HCl, or rather sodium chloride. If you get a white PPT, it is lead. But because here we are testing for aluminum, you'll see no white precipitate. Then you tell us aluminum is present. I think that uh, scenario is very clear now. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Good. yes. Good. Now we go to the concentrating the O. Yes. Okay. Now, concentration and purification. We want now to increase the percentage, or rather the percentage of the O. <sighs> okay. Now, the O is first crushed and dissolved in concentrated sodium hydroxide. We want to increase the, we want to concentrate it. Concentrated is like we want to remove some impurities and therefore increase the percentage of the O in this, in the whatever you have got. Because the rock that you have may not have, some percentage may not be the, the bauxite, the aluminum oxide. There are impurities. So you want to remove the impurities and increase the percentage of the aluminum oxide in the O. So first of all, you crush it, then you add sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide will dissolve the aluminum oxide, will dissolve in sodium hydroxide. Silica, which is also an impurity, will also dissolve in the, in, will also dissolve in sodium hydroxide. While iron two oxide or rather iron three oxide is insoluble. So there are some impurities. First of all, you have to understand here, there are some impurities that might be found in aluminum. The impurity, the main impurity there, and it's good to capture them. The main impurity there, we have the iron oxide. The iron oxide, we can have the iron two oxide. We can have the iron two oxide and silica. This silica, those are the main impurities. So when you add sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide will dissolve the silica and aluminum oxide because aluminum oxide is amboteric. So iron three oxide will not dissolve. So what, because you have added, we are saying the main component on this O is aluminum oxide, we have silica, we have iron three oxide. So when you add sodium hydroxide, silica is acidic, it will dissolve in sodium hydroxide. Aluminum oxide is amboteric, it will also dissolve in sodium hydroxide. Therefore, the remaining component, which is the iron oxide, both iron two and iron three, they will not dissolve. So you filter. Once you filter, the iron three oxide will be now be filtered out as a red mud. So the residue here will be the iron three oxide or the iron two oxide. So the aluminum hydroxide is precipitated by either bubbling CO2. Now, the, result, the filtrate now, after you filter, the residue is iron oxide. The filtrate contains both sodium silicate and sodium aluminate. After that, you want now, your interest is now the aluminum hydroxide. So you bubble carbon four oxide into the solution. At the time of the short one, or you add pure, Aluminium hydroxide restaurants. 
So that role is to precipitate aluminum hydroxide. Once now you have the aluminum hydroxide, you heat it, you roast it at a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius to decompose to aluminum oxide plus water. You know, temperature of aluminum, uh, temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius is very high temperature. That the temperature that can even see, uh, that can even evaporate a very senior ghost. So therefore, this high temperature will now be able to remove the water component present in aluminum oxide, to, in, in aluminum hydroxide to form aluminum oxide. So let me be able now to summarize this thing in a very uh, simple way. One, we want to increase the Octopus. Let me repeat, I'm repeating that. So the first statement is that you crush the O. Once you crush the O, that's the first statement. Once you crush it, you add sodium hydroxide. Are we together there? Yes. So once yes. now yes. you add the sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide dissolves what? Those who are listening, what does it dissolve? Aluminium oxide. Oxide. And what? The other. Silicon fog. And? Silicon fog. Silicon fog. Silicon fog. And silica. We just call it silica. We eat the sodium hydroxide dissolves silica because silica is acidic. It dissolves aluminium oxide because it is what? Amphoteric. The other component of the O is iron oxide, which is, could be iron 2 oxide or iron 3 oxide. Those two cannot dissolve in what? In sodium hydroxide. So the resulting mixture as a solution of sodium hydroxide plus silica, you get sodium silicate. Sodium hydroxide plus aluminum oxide forms what? Sodium aluminate. Those are solutions. The iron three oxide and iron two oxide do not dissolve. You filter. Once you filter, you have the residue. What is the residue? The residue contains what? What is the main component of the residue? Iron three oxide. Iron three oxide. Iron three oxide or iron two oxide. What is the main component of the filtrate? Sodium aluminate. Sodium aluminate. Sodium silicate. Sodium aluminate and sodium silicate. Cindy. Yes. Yes. Are we together. Yes. Now you want to obtain the aluminium hydroxide. Now, so from that mixture. For you to obtain aluminum hydroxide, you bubble carbon four oxide. You bubble carbon four oxide, or alum or you add aluminum hydroxide crystals. The purpose of adding carbon four oxide or aluminum hydroxide crystals is to precipitate aluminum hydroxide. So what you bubble carbon oxide or aluminum hydroxide crystals to the filtrate, the aluminum hydroxide is precipitated. And from there, you filter. Once you filter, the residue is what? Aluminum hydroxide. Then you heat the aluminum hydroxide to form aluminum oxide plus water. I think that process is now clear. Is it okay yes. now? Yes. 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 So now, very important thing to note, the process of precipitating aluminum hydroxide by adding pure aluminum hydroxide crystals is called seeding. 
So that one is called seeding. That is why we do it to seed. So that process is called seeding, whereby you are now precipitating the aluminium hydroxide using uh, using using aluminium hydroxide crystals. Melewa, Vijana. Yes. 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 Hello, Daniel. Yes. I'm still going to re record this lesson and also post it in the recording the YouTube and put it there. So I'm going. I can rec record it, but of course I can still put it there for those people who have come late. Melewa, yeah. So that we don't, yes. we we may end up continuing, continuing, uh, and all those kind of things. Because, of course, it's very much important for us to be able to discuss. Lazima to mali the topic. To kendele ibo na watu amekudia late, we may not finish. And then it's not going to be very good for us. What time is this lesson in Aisha Sangapi? Nine. 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 Already nine. So, na jiu tunahanda tu. Because people came late. So, juu yae story, acha tuendele tu. So, kuna mtu wa just screenshot hii ndiniyo? Mwe screenshot? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Now we go to electrolysis of molten aluminium oxide. I want to, I want just to take you back to electrolysis. Hii ni molten aluminium. Kuna ilawana, eh? This is molten what? Aluminium. So being molten aluminium, when you pass an electric current through a melt, what happens from the elementary electrolysis you, done, you did in electrolysis of binary compounds? Ukipitisha electric current kwa molten electrolyte, it will decompose the electrolyte into the corresponding anion and the cation component of that particular compound. Like yesterday, you talked about electrolyte, not yesterday, but on Wednesday, electrolysis of aluminum, molten aluminum or aluminum chloride. So when you pass an electric current through aluminum, uh, sodium chloride, it decomposes the sodium. In a katanisha katikat, unabaki na sodium ion, na chloride ion. Sawa? Yes. Yeah. When you pass an electric current through aluminium oxide, what do you get as the product? What do you get? Aluminium ions. Yeah, aluminium ions and oxide ions. Good. Very magnetic. The cation, the cation there is what? Aluminium ion. So the cation will go to the cup. The cathode. Cathode. cathode and the anion, which is the oxide ion, will go to the anode and get discharged. So let's look at this. Eh? In this electrolysis, first of all, the aluminium oxide is heated until it melts. Then, once it melts, remember aluminium oxide has a melting point of 20 degrees. This kind of temperature can only be found in hell. It's very hard to maintain such kind of temperatures on hand. So therefore, to avoid seeking the assistance of those people who work in cremation, in cremation, cremation or other cremation centers, or other assistant of uh, abnormal people, we cannot maintain a temperature over 2000. It is going to be very expensive. A lot of fuel and electricity will be required to maintain such a high temperature. So invoking the superior powers of the alchemist, and the knowledge acquired, eh? we remember in form one that impurities lower the melting point. So to lower the melting point of aluminum oxide, which is two, over 2000, you add cryolite, which lower the melting point from 2000 to what? 800. 800. Now I want you to tell you what, how, if you ask the exam in the exam, why cryolite is added? Just say to 
lower the melting point of aluminum oxide. Don't mention the it will be a wrong commitment. Yeah, just say okay. to lower the, don't say to lower the melting point. Tell us, tell us to lower the melting point of aluminum oxide, just like that. High current of one of 100,000 ampere that pass through the electrolyte to maintain it in molten state and to decompose it. So there's so much question that is added here. First of all, the method of electrolysis here is the, electroly the, the method of extraction of aluminum here is the electrolysis. El aluminum oxide has a very high temperature of over 2000. So to lower the melting point to manageable level, we normally add cryolite, which, lo which lower the melting point of aluminum oxide from over 2000 to around 800. We also use a current of over 100,000 amperes, and the role of it is to maintain the ore in molten state and to decompose it. As that, you go sawa mwelewa kabisa? Yes. 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 Good. Now. That is the diagram of electrolysis of aluminum. That's a simple diagram. That's a simple diagram showing that. In a normal examination setup, if you are told to label the anode, don't label it like this. Utapata the tabu zingine zime label anode like this. That is wrong. So kiandika anode like this, ukisambia he this is the anode, then we are going to harmoniously and in a very katangarous manner give you a zero. So you can be told to label the anode. The anode must be this one. Yeah. This one. They must be the one that are dipped in the electrolyte. Those are the anodes. The region containing the electrolyte is this. And listen very carefully. This is the you know, at, at, at during electrolysis, the aluminum decomposes to form aluminum ion and oxide ion. This is the, the graph. And let me just use the next diagram, which is more magnetic, so that you are able to understand better. Let me show you my personalized diagram. So this is the diagram of electrolysis of aluminum. You are able to see it? Yes. 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 This yes. diagram now, yes. Yes. the one for electrolyte. This is now a personalized diagram uh, from the ocean itself. Now, in that kind of a diagram, we have the anode. The anode must be dipped into the electrolyte. And you can be able to do the way of laboring it. Number two, we have the steel tank here, red. This is the steel tank. The blue one is the anode, not the anode, this is the cathode. The blue one is the cathode. So one, during electrolysis, the aluminum ions, because the electrolysis now decomposes the aluminum oxide to aluminum and oxide ions. The aluminum ions go to the cathode. They gain electrons to form aluminum. But remember, this is molten. So that's why we are using aluminum in liquid state. What it forms, aluminum is denser. Aluminium is denser than the electrolyte. The electrolyte is molten aluminium oxide and cryolite. So there are something that you need to understand. Aluminium being denser will form the bottom layer and is tapped out like this. The oxide, the oxide ions move to the anode, which is the head, the anode is there, and they lose electrons to form oxygen gas. So the oxygen gas is, is lost at the anode. 
if you are told to tell us the observation that is meant at the anode, you are going to say bubbles of a colorless gas. Bubbles of a colorless gas is lost, or rather is evolved, or rather is seen at the anode. And those are colorless gas. You are not a magician to see a colorless gas. Whatever you can see as a normal human being is bubbled. The evaporescence is what you can be able to see. So you tell us bubbles of a gas. As you can be able to see in this color diagram that I've already drawn, it shows you that the cryolite and aluminum oxide, which form the electrolyte, they are less dense than molten aluminum. So they form the bottom layer, the, the, the top layer. Then the bottom compartment is wherever we have the molten aluminum, what is formed, is formed the bottom layer. So that is why it is formed here. And therefore now, remember, it's very much important now that uh, the, the, alumin the molten aluminum is tapped out and collected here. This, 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 this diagram it entirely summarizes the entire process of extraction of aluminum. You pass an electric current, it will decompose aluminum oxide to aluminum ions and oxide ions. The aluminum ions being, being the cation are positively charged will be attracted to the cathode, which is negatively charged. In the cathode, the aluminum ions gain electrons to form aluminum. While the oxide ions will go to the anode, and they lose electrons to form oxygen gas. There must be two oxide ions. And then remember at this high temperature of 800, eh? although we say these are graphite anodes and graphite is inert. Remember graphite is carbon. So the oxygen which is formed at the anode will be able to react with the carbon at such high temperatures to form carbon four oxide. The carbon four oxide now formed, its code will be lost. And therefore we are going to say, after some time, the graphite anode is periodically removed or rather replaced from time to time because the oxygen gas produced at the anode will react with carbon at high temperature form carbon oxide. Therefore, the graphite anode is gradually eaten away, or rather gradually wears out. Mnalewa, your point, eh? Yes. Yeah. But Mr. Emma, there are two things here. Yeah. First of all, I want to try to debunk some um, fallacious information that is captured in some of the publications. That, when you look at most of the books, they are trying to balance the electrons there, whereby they are put four here, 12 electrons, and all those kind of things. That is not chemistry. It is something else. Because if the examiner will ask you to write the equation at the cathode, that equation must be balanced using the simplest mole ratio. That is the standard chemistry protocol. That is the standard dictate of the chemistry protocol according to the UPAC. So you need to understand that, of course, you know do uh, a fabrication whereby you find they have tried to balance the electrons. We put four aluminum there, 12 aluminum there, and all those kind of scenarios. So it is very much important for you to understand. Unless otherwise, you just write the simplest chemical equation, which is balanced. It does it out to be to balance the electrons on both sides. And I think that is very clear. You're going to be told, the examiner can tell you, label the region containing the electrolyte. Rep label the, the region containing the molten aluminum. Label the anode, label the cathode, and of course, uh, of course, the, the steel tank will act as an eating potato rather to be able to be able to sustain 
the high temperatures that are there. So it's very much important for, for you to be able to understand. Somebody has raised hands. Morioli, you can ask. Uh, what, what, there is uh, this is three layers in the, in the tank. There's a light blue layer, a white layer, and a gray layer. Yeah. What is the white, what is the light blue layer? The light blue, which one? Yes. Oh, that one is not, uh, it's just like a cover, it's like you're trying to cover that kind of, so these are, this one is nothing, sometimes you're even going to find this. There is, there, it is not even there in many of the publications. So like, like, like a lid, it's just like now covering the, the entire process. So that one is, it doesn't have an issue. So this one, the steel tank is to withstand the high temperatures. Right? So the, because the, the, the temperature of the steel is very high. So the steel tank is to, to go to withstand the, 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 the high temperatures of course to maintain the electrolyte in, in, in that high temperature. So that it doesn't crystallize. So it is simply like a shield to be able to withstand that high temperature of the of the, the electro. You know we are operating at a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius. So that's simply the, the role of the tank because its temperature is above that one of the electrolytes. But on the things on steel, I said the, the steel tank is simply. Uh, let me see. The, the, the steel tank is simply to be able to withstand to maintain uh, that high temperature because now uh, is, is the temperature of the steel is above that one of the what? The, 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 the electrolyte. It will be able to maintain or rather to withstand that high temperature of about 800 degrees Celsius. Somebody has said, I repeat, I just want to, uh, I'm a SEMA too, okay. Somebody I'm a SEMA like, uh, somebody I'm a Lisa, when you're told to label the electrolyte, the electrolyte is this. It is simply, you know, there'll be two layers, of course. Like, even when you look at this, when you look at the previous one, this is now a simple one, which is like now, if you're told, for example, here to label the region containing the electrolyte here, the region collecting the electrolyte will be this one, and below it, that is, we have the molten what? We have the molten aluminum. We have the molten aluminum. So when you're told to label the region containing the electrolyte, it's simply the region simply, they are just going to be two main layer, two main of course the layers. And of course, due to their density, that's what makes it possible to separate them. That aluminum is denser than what? It's denser than the electrolyte. So the region containing the electrolyte is this one, and the region, uh, this is now the, 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 the molten aluminum. That is somebody has asked, if you are told to label uh, the electrolyte, what do you label? So normally the only thing to, for you to be able to understand that now is that um, we have the molten, we have two liquid there, molten uh, aluminum oxide and cryolite, and we have the molten aluminum. Molten aluminum is denser, so it forms the bottom layer, while the molten, while the molten uh, 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 electrolyte form the top layer. That's very much important for you to understand. Mutual oxygen and by oxygen. The oxygen release, when the oxygen goes to the anode, it will react with carbon, the carbon anode at high temperature to form carbon oxide. So the anode has to be replaced from time to time. Okay, somebody has asked, like, uh, so I'm saying, no, I'm saying if you're told to label the anode, you neither to label any of them. Of course, the Aroyango Jasika, any of them is okay. You don't have to, to show the, the three anodes. You can just label one of them. Just like the cathode data on the label here, it doesn't matter where you put it. But when you are told to label the anode, you can label any of this, it is still going to be okay. Number two, the other important thing that you need to understand is this, eh? that uh, I don't know what I was trying to, there's somebody who has asked a question. I want to go back to it. The fate, what is the fate? What is the fate of a modern aluminum 
So when you have now the modern aluminium, you tap it out, whereby now after you collect it, now it's going to solidify. And once it's solidified, now you can use it to make sophoria. It can be used to make all those things, even using uh, the, 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 the insulators and all those kind of scenarios, the electrical wires, you know, it's, you now go into, you now uh, start using it. It is of course taken to the industry whereby it, it is meant into several objects is used for various uses as we're going to see the, the uses of aluminum. Remember it's the one that is also used to make um, aeroplane parts by combining with the with zinc to form the duralumin. We'll be able to have a look at that. Somebody has said So kuna mtu anauliza to andike equation ya ya dissolution of oh that one we are going to tackle it when we we'll be dealing with the, the a topic of um, uh, uh, the swords that's the first topic in form four because of time factor it is going to is a whole process whereby you are forming the the tetra hydroxo aluminium the aluminium ion and that one may even make your work more complicated so it's good uh, you just wait. There is somewhere we will be able to have a look at that because of time factor. Number two, somebody has asked. Kuna kitu ingine naona hapa imeulizwa. Is this aluminium pure? Yes, yeah, the aluminium, the aluminium uh, that is formed here is pure. Electrolysis forms the purest product that you can ever get. So, even if you want to get a pure substance, you can use electrolysis because you cannot have, you cannot discharge any other cation apart from the aluminium. And of course, everything is there about why do you need to add cryolite? What makes it possible to separate molten aluminium from the from the electrolyte? It is denser. So that is very much important for us to be able to have a look at that. Um, somebody has asked the colorless gas formed at the anode is oxygen gas. That's the main equation. They just say. The concept of formation of carbon dioxide is simply a secondary product, which is formed after some time. So the focus here, it is electrolysis of aluminum oxide, not any other product. So the bubbles of a gas that are seen as the anode, it is oxygen gas, not carbon dioxide. So I think that one is very clear. I think that one is very uh, very clear about that. <laughs> okay, somebody is a, is a, is a, is talking about is the craolite is craolite remain in the tank. Of course, you see, <laughs> this is a continuous process. Listen very carefully. This is a continuous process. So, as you continue, as you put the aluminium oxide into the tank, the aluminium the aluminum ions are, are discharged anode and the oxygen are also discharged. So as the, 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 the aluminum oxide is used up, you, you add more of the aluminum oxide. So when you add it more, still the, the craolite can be used and reduced. As you're going to see later, the craolite also contains sodium ions. But the sodium ions are not going to be discharged, although they are also good for the anode because they are just a small amount. So there'll be some uh, sodium ions moving here and uh, aluminum ions moving to the cathode. But only aluminum can be discharged because they are in higher concentration. When two, two cations move to the same cathode and one is in higher concentration, the more concentrated one will be preferentially discharged instead. So you can continue using the same cryolite. After the, the aluminum oxide has been used, is almost depleted, you continue adding more of it. So it's a continuous process. So it continues, you continue adding aluminum oxide, aluminum oxide. So the craolite, of course, uh, it will continue to be used, can be used for, for, for several processes. It's, it, it is going to be mixed with the aluminum oxide. I can see people are, yes, somebody is asking why, um, the 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 the, the craolite does not partake part in the 
in the electoral races. We are going to understand that more about that. Uh, I've said the reason for creolite in Likuani Meseman, I don't know why very late, but let me just say it. Creolite, Mutwa Mkumbusha Mutwa Nauli the role of clearite. Can you tell him? No, it's the melting point of aluminium oxide. Yeah, the aluminium oxide, the melting point of it is above 2000. So we normally add cryolite to lower the, the, the boiling, the melting point to around 800. Why is it not advisable to carry out the electrolysis at the temperature of, why is it not advisable to carry out electrolysis at a temperature of 2000? Because it's going to be very what? Somebody can remember? It's going to be very expensive, expensive to maintain expensive. such a high temperature. Very from yeah. <laughs> yeah, very important for us. So because of time factor, again, we have like 10 minutes, but now that's it. The equations at the cathode at the anode, you can be able to screenshot. It is simply a repeat of what we have said. See you to Shasema, isn't it? Mm. This one you have already explained in the diagram, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so, yes. So that is it. Automatically, we can go to the next. The oxygen pond react with the graphite anode due to high temperatures forming carbon four oxide or carbon two oxide. The anode wears away and can be replaced, should be replaced from time to time. So you can be able to get that. That's also we also talked about it. You can screenshot. That's something that we had explained in the diagram, Cindy. Yes. 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 Somebody is asking, can this carbon two oxide and carbon four oxide be tapped? Of course, um, you can. Of course, you can try to use it. You can tap them. You can use it uh, to prevent poisoning the environment. We'll be looking at now the pollution effect. These are some of the pollution effects. The carbon two oxide produced there will bring about global warming, and carbon two oxide is very poisonous when inhaled. We can do, look at uses of aluminium. This is not something that we, you need to be taught. Uh, you can just control making overhead cables due to its good electrical conductivity, making mirrors as a paint when powdered, making cooking pots or other pots or other pans to remove dissolved oxygen from water and metals under, under a process called dermite process. In dermite reaction for welding of iron and steel. So. Uh, that they put with the somebody has raised the hand. Can you ask the question that you wanted to ask, Moiruri? Um, can yeah, can, can this oxygen, uh, yeah. can the oxygen be collected? Is the oxygen collected? The oxygen that you are getting there, yes, you can collect it, but you see, it's still going to be very little oxygen, so it may not be very much. It can need be used for really for commercial purposes, but yeah, you can collect it. You know, you can easily tap. You simply need to make sure that now that the rod, the cathode is now, of course, connected to something like a syringe or rather a guard. You generally it out. You can be able to tap it, but of course, it's going to be very little. It's not much that can be really be used much, but you can still be able to tap the oxygen. So make sure that you screenshot. Have you screenshotted for uses? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. What we're going to do is we're going to Can you come back to room temperature? We're going to evaporate as if you are being you are being heated at a temperature of 3,000 degrees Celsius. Just relax. I'll be able to give you some more questions using the octopus technique. So I'm going to invoke the spirit of the novel, the octopus <laughs> to give you a question on that. Yes, of course. Munani Pata. 
Yes, yes. There was a lot of background noise. I don't know ni mtu alikuwa anakuwa anakimbizana na kuku huko nyumbani ama ni wapi. Aya. Hello the Valbinia pretty short that's not something that you need to be. Some of questions I'm saying ni tapeana so I'm relaxed too. So the, we have the major the main o of uh, of of aluminum is alumina which is made of aluminum magnesium what is it hiyo ni nini natokea huko are you getting me no yes yeah yes mjumu i think there is a problem kuna mtu ana nini yake inatusumbua So now Juma, please mute. The main uh, ore of aluminum is duralumin. It is made up of aluminum, mute. magnesium, copper. So now I hope you are able to hear me. So In that kind of another saying the we have the main is duralumin which contain 95% aluminum magnesium and copper it has a better quality than aluminum because it is lighter it is stronger it is more durable and more resistant to corrosion you can unmute yourself and just of course of course I muted all of all of, all of you so i'm saying somebody is asking a very funny question what the main role of duralumin Duralumin is a is an O of is a, is an alloy of aluminum. So it's not something that you are going to it's not something that is added to the electric to the it's very much important for you to be able to understand. So are you getting me somebody to unmute himself and of course I want to get that point. No. Muna ni pata? No. Yeah? No. Yes. Yes. Okay good. So <coughs> have you done the screenshotting? Yes. 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 Somebody will ask you why do yes. aluminum why do aluminum is used in making aeroplane parts and you don't say it is strong say it is stronger it is lighter it is more durable and more resistant to corrosion. So remember duralumin is prepared from aluminum. It is an alloy of aluminum made up of magnesium, aluminum, copper, things like that. Very important for you uh, to be able to understand. You have taken a screenshot of this? Not yet. Yes. Can you do we it have, now? Yes. We yes. have. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. Eh? yes. Revision exercise. State and uh, state pollution effect associated with the extraction of aluminum. Any moja ada gama sijawafunza. Carbon dioxide. Ada carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide release carbon four good good carbon dioxide release will be poisonous when in air what else it will be a moment can you be no more 3g stop behaving like a, an amorphous that hello bro behave normally i don't know what you are writing here now <laughs> the pollution factors of one we have carbon dioxide emitted is very poisonous what else the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is human being carbon dioxide causes what human mute global warming warming let me tell you this eh kuna kitu nataka kuambia for oil extraction of metals kuna kitu moja a pollution effect that applies to all the metals in your type soma and that is creation of what gullies there will be creation of gullies that apply to all metals as we extract the metal from the ground we always create those gullies and that causes environmental degradation tunaelewana eh yes so that's it Mm. formation of gullies that is number one. we can talk about formation of gullies 
We can now talk about noise pollution due to heavy machinery used. Carbon fog that causes global warming. So those are some of the issues uh, that are there. Have you done a screenshot? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Two reasons why duralumin is prepared in manufacture of aircraft parts. It is durable. It is lighter. It is more durable. It is stronger. Less resistant to corrosion. More resistant to corrosion. More so to it is, don't say it is light, but it's lighter, it's more durable, more stronger. It is lighter. Thing. Yes. So, so make sure that the, the, you invoke the second degree of cobarillon. It's lighter, lighter stronger, DJ more lighter. resistant to corrosion. Two people have raised their hand. Can you ask the question that you wanted to ask? Um, Charles, uh, the last lesson, we learned about sodium. And we learned that it's mainly extracted from rock salt. So does the rock salt also form galleys when it is extracted? Huh? The ro rock salt in extraction of sodium, does it form galleys? No. Yeah, the one that, uh, where do you get rock salt from? The ocean. <laughs> ocean and... Yeah, of course, I think that one is an exception, see Lazima. But does it mean that all, all the rock salt can only be found in the... You see, we, we have the... We also have, you know, where do you obtain sodium? To control, which are the ores of sodium that you learned on Wednesday? Name them. Trona. 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 So again, the quasalpetra. Are you also extracting it from the ocean? We... No, no. So sticky like it is not that. But of course, the way you are, you are raising a very valid point is that is it done of a certified working chemical. So, like when you are using the trona, <laughs> the rock salt, of course, that um, that one is, is using the, the superior powers. That one you don't need to. That one cannot create garage. But we are saying. Remember, if you're told to, to the, 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 the pollution effect associated with the extraction of sodium, it's not really limited to, to rock salt, isn't it? Because we still have other 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 ores like the salpetra. Are you getting concerned right? Eh? Yes. 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 Very important. So now on a chat mingi ya pacha nione kama kuna moja, ina leta shida dogo dogo, no so no so. Uh, somebody, in fact, somebody has really, has really answered that question. That uh, there are also other odds like the salpetra, which necessarily may not mean that everything is coming from the ocean. From the ocean. So assignment, you can attempt it. A white rocky solid is suspected to contain aluminium ions. Uh, describe how you confirm presence of aluminum ions, aluminum in the solid. screenshot, a screenshot You write. I'm a morning. Uh, share your sword. share the question. <laughs> Okay, let me use another another one now. Let me just use that. Nice, I I can but Sai, Olunga, you do that. 
So now you have written it now. Mayandika, you have written it now. I think somebody when you go to the you seeing that question? Yes. Yes. Now screenshot now. Yes. That's the octopus. That's an octopus uh, question. That's an octopus question. You can I about Jaisha, you screenshot it, then you try to answer it. Uh, you can look at the look at the octopus revision master, those who have it. You are going to get those questions. You can also get the answers from there. Excuse have you done me, a sir? screenshot of that question? Yes. Uh, there's a question that yes. I've seen that is C Roman 2. C Roman 2. So you've not discussed it. There's still tanks. Go and research. Yeah? <laughs> We, we, we talked about why we need to. Of course, I can just, the only thing is like now, you know, the seal tank is needed. Maybe I can just explain that. But you see, it is also being lined with graphite anode. Why are we, who is this animal now? Why is somebody writing on the, on the screen? Let us be, let us be normal. Now, Maybe, maybe you can look at that, but maybe if you don't be able to get that, but uh, the concept is very simple. If you assume the steel tank was not lined with graphite anode, what will happen? Remember the, 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 the steel tank is not what? It is not, a, it's not inert because steel is iron. So it may be able to react. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. why we are lining it with the the graphite uh, but just go and uh, try to research that and be able to get back to that. Look at the, uh, that question, you can be able to look at the, the, the <laughs> Octopus Revision Master P.A. Kopale and be able to. So then finally, those are the other questions. Have you done a screenshot again? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, look here. The last the number E okay. number E don't try to attempt to attempt it. You can't answer that one. That one requires students who have learned electrolysis. So the, the deep content electrolysis. So E don't worry with it, but the others try to answer it. But not except part E. Part E, this one you cannot attempt. But now, of course, try to look at that. Try to look at the, the, the Octopus Revision Master. Of course, we'll be able to get uh, those kind of scenarios. Otherwise, we have come to the end of our very beautiful uh, uh, magnetic law. Somebody is asking whether it's an Octopus a book. Octopus is a, is a book, of course, the Octopus Revision Master. And people have it. If you have not uh, seen it, of course, uh, you can be able to link up. Octopus is a book. Is a revision book that you can use to get it. Go research, try to answer those questions. You can uh, get, there are some of you, you have the Octopus the revision book. So try to use it to get that. By the end of the, 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 the by the time you finish revising that, you will have now understood uh, much of the question from there. And I think now, Mukosawa, have you understood it? Uh, Santa. Okay, yes, have a very magnetic yes, day. God yes, bless you. Yes, sir. Thank you. To an ah, anonymous so week. Good. Thank you. To an anonymous week. Peace. Ammonia. Oh. Thank you so much. Oh,
Mwalimu, could you grant us permission to record the the communities? The what? The session. The session. Yeah, of course. The Uberu diwa na kwa kandi, but the lesson is recorded. We can still upload it. Still, the lesson the YouTube then you can do. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Somebody is thinking about the octopus of the copy. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot get my book at soft copy. If you want a book, you can only get it in hard When you get soft copy, how much? It is just that is that is a very cutangarous request. How much is the book? 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 Only a small price of a thousand. <laughs> Ulila wa draw there are so many students with the with the octopus. So but the thousand killing. Mudo na ulila why is the book god octopus because it uses the octopus technique. The way you have seen the 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 the, the way you have seen the analysis of the question. That instead of having 20 questions on uh, on aluminum, you are able to synchronize and extend the tentacles of of, of the octopus and be able to a uh, summarize all the all the area that can be captured by the guy you did the small compass of the <laughs> <laughs> what is it it's so cool budget anyway let's continue with the discussion i think you you can be able to test me anything that you want it to jafata you can still be able to test me and be able to answer me We'll see whether we can create some uh, sub groups. So you are just uh, we can create groups for for you, and then maybe mm. we can be able to continue the conversation on the WhatsApp group. Yes, sir. Yeah, or maybe we create a Telegram whereby you can fit all the students, then we can be able to, uh, with the conversation there in terms of answering questions. Yes, Telegram. <laughs> mtu ana anawaambia na uza October the 300 that is huyo ni mkora kabisa and of course it can be very dangerous for you otherwise all the best i think you have enjoyed the lesson i also enjoyed it it was a pleasure thank you This lesson, even the sodium, I've recorded it and it is a YouTube, so you can check on it. Just look at the sodium, but look at the ocean of chemistry. You'll be able to get, be able to get the, the notes and the lesson. I've also recorded the one for for sodium, so it is just there. Just look for it. For the next lesson in Anza Sangapi. Ten that, my time. What the best about good day? Goodbye, sir.